The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome today's presentation to today's presentation of Coffee with the Pros, 15 Hot Minutes of Dynamics 365 Learning for Admins and Power Users. In case uh, we are new to you, we're Dyn365 Pros. Our mission, simple. Make it easy for users to implement and take advantage of Dynamics 365. Today's topic is Dynamics 365 and Power BI. Uh, please note that uh, all attendee microphones have been muted. Please submit any questions you might have in the GoToWebinar dashboard. We will follow up with you after the webinar has concluded. And assuming that the recording works right, we'll send you each a link tomorrow so you can rewatch the presentation or share it with a colleague. Uh, today's presenter is Aaron Karakowitz, one of our consultants. And I'm going to, uh, without further delay, hand over the presentation to Erin, and she will take it from here. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Erin. Thanks, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Um, as you've heard probably from us before, if you are familiar with us, we love Power BI. Um, Power BI has been available now for several years. Its place in helping organizations understand their Dynamics 365 data grows with every release. Um, there are constantly updates and new pieces that are valuable to all of us. We plan to work through Power BI as a series of webinars going forward to help users and admins enhance their experience and adopt this tool efficiently. We'll be providing tips on Power BI as well as update information going forward in um, other little uh, quick webinars like this. For this beginning session, we're going to take a look first at viewing Dynamics 365 data in Power BI dashboards, as well as some filtering in Power BI to let you do a visual analysis. And then probably most importantly out of this is going to walk through creating and adding some of those Power BI dashboard components into your actual Dynamics 365 instance to expose it there, um, kind of make it more of a one-stop place. So I'm going to start first with a Power BI instance with some pre-built content packs from the Dynamics 365 services. If you haven't um, used a or implemented a content pack yet in Power BI. These are really easily loaded within Power BI. Um, there are several specifically targeted to your Dynamics 365 data, like this sales analytics for Dynam Dynamics 365 content pack. Each content pack contains a data set, report, and dashboard. So again, if you haven't already loaded one over here, there's just this get data option. And you'll see here, my organization, these are content packs that perhaps an admin will be creating and then exposing, definitely something we'll walk through in the future. The services is where you would find Dynamics 365 specific content packs. Um, you can scroll through here, um, those of you familiar with things like Click Dimensions Marketing, there's a, a tool in there for that, a content pack. You can filter search in here and you'll see the one we're using today, Sales Analytics for Dynamics 365. To load this, it's as simple as get it now and it'll walk you through basically applying your uh, OData URL and pulling all of that in. I've already got one loaded, so we're gonna take a look at this Sales Analytics one. So filtering and viewing your data within the Power BI um, interface is, of course, very straightforward. That's what we love so much about it. Um, we're going to take this as an example. So we're looking at our dashboard right now. If I click on one of these individual tiles or components, 
it'll take us to the actual report where that came from. Um, so as in Dynamics 365, we have a lot of different charts and pieces all over the place, but you can create an individual dashboard um, or a dashboard to share with other users. Visual filtering is the most straightforward way to dig into your data here. If I were to click on any one of these actual color bars, it's going to filter down very visually um, to give me further information. Hovering over is where you would see some detail. But in addition to that, there's filtering over here. So expanding that bar on the very right is what will provide you with some things like um, kind of more language filters that you can select from. So this one is the current fiscal quarter. You can apply true or false to that. You'll note also that this is divided into page level filters and report level filters. So if you're working with your report, um, that's where all of these tabs are included. So you can apply those filters in either place. So that's the quick um, kind of down and dirty, taking a look at the visualizations in Power BI. Um, many of us are probably familiar with those. But many users are really used to going to Dynamics 365 and want to stay targeted in there. You know, one fewer tab, fewer clicks. That's, you know, um, easy to help narrow down and get people to adopt using Power BI. So to enable and use our Power BI vis visualizations within Dynamics 365, it's just a quick setting to turn that on. So we just pop over here to settings, administration, and system settings. The reporting tab is where this is kind of tucked in there. Um, you can see whether users can embed Power BI visuals. By default, this is set to no in organizations. And all you need to do is set that to yes and okay. You may need to refresh your browser. So it's easy as that to turn it on. And what we want to do now is actually go ahead and do some work with some dashboards and talk about what the different options here. A couple of things to note about the dashboards or Power BI components within Dynamics 365 are first that security in Power BI is not the same as security in Dynamics 365 security roles. So the data is more widely visible. You're not able to narrow down by default seeing the records of ownership. So at that point, you're having to do some more work in Power BI to target that down and then personalize dashboards to individual users to share that out. So if security is a big concern, um, there's you know, something to be cognizant of as you're working through this. Additionally, Power BI is not presenting real-time data. You schedule these refreshes, um, but Otherwise, if someone's working, you know, against a pipeline, they go update an opportunity. They shouldn't expect to see the actual pipeline if it's a Power BI pipeline visualization to refresh automatically, you know, within the next couple minutes. It takes that scheduled refresh to happen. And then finally, Power BI dashboards must be personal, not set or created at the system level. So this is where you do have some more control over things like some privacy or security um, because you can individualize and share, you know, specifically with team members. However, um, these aren't things that are created at the system level. They're created personally. To create a Power BI dashboard, once you've enabled that Power BI option, you'll see that initially you just see the Dynamics 365 dashboard under the new, but you'll see the Power BI dashboard option. So what this will do is really take that entire dashboard that you've got in Power BI and throw it right into your Dynamics 365 instance. So this is the one that we were looking at previously. And you can see this is a mirror image basically of the dashboard we were previously working with. You have the option to enable it for mobile. So very simply, you can see that we've pulled that entire dashboard all the work that was already done in Power BI is now displayed here. So great things about this. Obviously, you can have many more tiles than the six that we have just in the Dynamics 365 dashboard options um, and different types of visualizations without having to do things like creating a web resource. If we were to click on any one of these, 
that opens up the Power BI report and functionality. So you can see now we're looking at that report like we had previously. And if you wanted to dig even a little bit further, the Power BI icon is right here and that will open up a new tab and take you right to Power BI. So a lot of this is um, little shortcuts, even if the user was just using Power BI. In some cases, um, the convenience of having a little tile set or a dashboard that they could quickly get to it, open Power BI, um, you'll find that a couple places. So let's create a Dynamics 365 dashboard and look at what it, the options are for kind of mixed components within a personal dashboard. So we know that there are pipeline reports that I've gotten, or uh, tiles that I have in Power BI, and of course the out of the box pipeline in Dynamics 365. So here we can insert a chart. I wanna look at opportunities, and I'll open opportunities and a sales pipeline. So great, that's what we know our normal pipeline looks like. I can combine that with Power BI data in the same dashboard. So we've got a sales pipeline here, different type of visualization. Um, I could compare different types of data if I just wanted a nice total here. You'd be able to see things like that as well. So you can Close this and take a look. So now looking at your dashboard, you can see the different types of components that you would have combined in one place. Um, so it's really as straightforward as that to start using Power BI tiles and components within Dynamics 365. And we would encourage users to start playing with that and presenting that to um, end users to, to say, you know, here are some options. It starts a great dialogue and open conversation about um, different options in the future. If you have any questions or um, would like to expand on any of those, please feel free again to send those in the GoToMeeting console or um, follow up with Mark or myself. And Mark, I'll pass it back to you to close it. Thank you, Aaron. So uh, I forgot to mention earlier, there is a handout available. It's uh, a little dated, but it's an intro to Power BI that Microsoft provides us. If you do need to call us today or in the future or email us because you need help or you have questions, whether it's about Power BI or any other aspect of Dynamics 365, please let us know. We're always here to help. And with that, we are going to uh, uh, sign off. Um, and again, you'll receive a, a link to a recording tomorrow that you can use to rewatch or share. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you at the next Coffee with the Pros.